Ayan. Uh, magandang hapon ka, Bops. Salamat at muli nyo kaming sasamahan sa isa na namang makabuluhan na talakayan. Ngunit, bago tayo dumako sa ating paksa, magpapakilala po kaming moderator for this webinar. Ako po si Alma Reyes at kasama ko po ngayong hapon si... Hello po, ako naman po si Brooklyn Flores. Bilang pakikiisa sa pagdiriwang ng Food Safety Day noong nakaraang linggo, ang aming kawanihan po ay magsasagawa po ng isang webinar tungkol po sa food defense. Tama ka dyan. At uh, hindi tayo mawawala sa pagsaselebrate ng World Food Safety Day noong June 7, kahit pa isang linggo na ang nakalipas. At ngayon, base sa huling tala, marami ang interesado sa ating webinar. As of 9 a.m. kanina, uh, we have uh, 687 total nang nag-register. Tama ka, Ms. Alma. Uh, marami ang nais matuto at malaman kung ano nga bang ating paksa ngayon. Ngunit bago po tayo pumunta sa exciting part, umpisahan po muna natin ang ating Mentimeter Attendance Check. So, mangyari lamang po na magbukas po tayo ng browser sa ating mga devices, sa, sa ating cellphone, laptop, or computer. At magtungo po tayo sa www.menti.com at ilagay po natin ang code sa box na inyong nakikita na 19187500. So, paano po makasali? Uh, magtungo lang po tayo sa www.menti.com at sa box provided, i-enter po natin ang ating code na 19187500 and click submit. Ito po ang ating code. Ayan. Ginagawa po natin itong maiksing mentimeter attendance check po bago po tayo mag-upisa o pa po malaman natin kung saang sektor po nang galing o bahagi ang ating mga live viewers ngayong araw. So sa inyong screen, uh, makikita niyo po yung mga choices. Kindly click in lang po kung saan po tayong sektor na bibilang. Kung tayo po ba ay galing sa National Government Agency, o sa cloud po nito, galing po sa academe, local government unit, private sector, student, former or former cooperative, or sa professional organization. Ngunit kung wala naman po sa mga pagpipilian, uh, maaari po natin i-click ang others. So mukhang marami-rami na po ang nakakapasok sa ating attendance check. Ayan. So, let's leave a minute po bago po natin mag-summarize or i-close po natin itong attendance check. So, so far we have 70 and counting na nakapasok sa ating platform. 
currently ang pinakamarami po natin ay mga estudyante. So, in a few seconds, we'll close this po. Ayan. And mukhang nakapasok naman na po lahat ng ating mga viewers and participants. Uh, let me summarize lang po ang ating attendance check po. So, so far we have 28 from the National Government Agency, 14 from the Academe, 3 from the Local Government Unit, 31 from the Private Sector, 50 students, 7 from former or former cooperative sector, we have two from the professional organization and one from others or may dumagdag pa po sa ating NGA and LGU at uh, private sector and students with a total po ng 144 who participated in this Mentimeter attendance check. So we'll be closing this po. Salamat po sa pakila ko, uh, Ms. Alms. Ayan, uh, maraming salamat sa pakikila ko sa ating attendance check. Paalala lamang na ang pretest link ay nakapost sa ating comment section at maaari pang masagutan. Ito po ay magsasara bago ang presentasyon ng ating unang speaker. Maraming salamat at Alms uh, sa paalala sa ating mga live viewers. Upang formal pong simula ng ating webinar, aming pong ipinapakilala ang aming assistant director, Ms. Mary Grace Mandigma, para sa pang unang mensahe. Hello po, Ma'am Grace. Hi, good afternoon, Brooke, and good afternoon, Alma, and good afternoon po sa ating mga live viewers who joined us this afternoon, who took time to join us this afternoon. So hopefully uh, through this uh, webinar, mas maintindihan po natin ano yung nilalaman ng Philippine National Standards for the Development of a Food Defense Plan. Marahil marami sa atin mas na familiar dun sa GMP, sa HACCP. So ito pong Food Defense Plan ay para sa ating uh, mga kasama sa sektor na ito para maiwasan yung intentional contamination of food. So, di ba, merong unintentional. Hindi mo naman sinasadya na contaminate mo yung pagkain. So, paano ba ang gagawin mo para ayusin yon? Ito naman, so, kung intentional na i-contaminate yung food, paano ba yung gagawin para maiwasan siya? No? So, hopefully, sabay-sabay tayong matuto kung paano ba to gawin at paano to magiging mas applicable sa ating sektor ng uh, agriculture at pangistahan. Uh, hopefully, you will enjoy this webinar. We invited uh, resource speakers to share with us their knowledge on developing food defense plan. So again, magandang hapon po. And uh, stick para po matutunan natin ang ibig sabihin ng food defense. Maraming salamat ulit, Brooke and Alma. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Grace, sa inyong mensahe. Bago tayo tumungo sa unang speaker, isang maikling paalala sa ating mga live viewers. Ito po ang ating house rules para sa ating webinar. Ayan. Ayan. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, para sa ating uh, house rules, Ang questions po ay entertain after each presentation. You may ask questions in the comment section. We hope to entertain all your questions, pero dahil limited ang time natin, we, uh, we may not be able to answer all the questions during the webinar. Last, uh, make sure to accomplish the pre- and post-test and feedback or evaluation form to be eligible for the Certificate of Participation. The pretest is available until the first topic begins. Until the first topic begins po. Make sure to check the link flash on the screen or in the comment section. The link to the post-test and evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar. Sa huli po, ah, sa, uh, bago matapos ang ating webinar, certificates and copies of the presentations will be given upon submission 
upon submission po ng ating evaluation form within 10 working days. All right. Ayan. Eh, salamat, Ms. Alm, sa pag-remind sa ating mga viewers tungkol sa mga kailangan upang makakuha ng certificate. Muli po, ang pag-release po ng certificate at kopya ng presentation ay uh, after po ng 10 working days, so magbigay lang po tayo ng palugit. At paalala po, uh, i-double check po natin ang spelling ng ating mga pangalan at email address po na ilalagay sa mga forms sa ating pre-test, post-test, and evaluation form dahil hindi po ito ma-recognize ng ating system at hindi po makakarating ang certificate and copy of presentation kung mali po or may maling letter or mali po sa pangalan po natin. Yes, tama Miss Brooke. Bine-verify pa po namin ang mga nag-participate at lumahok sa ating mga gawain. Um, alam kong excited na ang ating mga manonood. Hindi na namin papatagalin pa. Amin pong ipinakikilala ang ating unang speaker sa araw na ito. Siya po ay nagtapos sa kursong BS Food Technology sa UP Visayas. Siya ay may postgraduate diploma in food technology sa Massey University, New Zealand. At candidate for a Master's in Food Safety Management at Philippine Women's University. Kasalukuyan, siya ay food technologist tree sa pilot food plant ng UP Diliman at bilang project staff tree sa Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development sa funded project na extension of shelf life of rice meal in microwavable container. Ididiscuss niya sa atin ang PNS BAPS 134-2013 Food Defense Guidance for Industry. Ating i-welcome, Ms. Melissa Ann Shena. Magandang hapon po, Ms. Shena. Good afternoon po, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ibibigay na po namin ang floor sa inyo po to discuss po the PNS 134-2013. Salamat po. Good afternoon everyone and uh, today I will be talking about the Philippine National Standard Food Defense Guidance for the Industry. Uh, that's the PNSBA FPS 134 series of 2013. I am Melissa Ann G. Shen and I am from the UP Pilot Food Plant, Department of Food Science and Nutrition, College of Home Economics in UP Diliman. I will basically discuss the outline of the PNS on uh, food defense guidance for the food industry. And with that, I will be starting on the introduction as mentioned in the PNS, the objective and scope of the food defense guidance, the principles and the concepts, uh, and then developing a food defense plan as well as the basics of a food defense plan the vulnerability assessment, mitigation strategies and measures, the resource requirements needed, training tools and resources, assessment of the effectiveness of a food defense plan, audits and corrections, and food defense documents and records. In 2013, Republic Act 10536 amended the Meat Inspection Code of the Philippines, the RA 9296. Um, to include a division at the National Meat Inspection Service or the NMIS um, on enforcement and uh, food defense. So this particular division, the Enforcement and Food Defense Division, um, is tasked to be responsible for the enforcement of policies against hot meat and adulterated or misbranded meat products and the protection of meat products from hazardous contaminants. So the guidance document, this particular document, the PNS, is the final output of public-private sector collaboration between and among the technical working group that was created during that time and the relevant stakeholders who participated in the public consultations. The technical working group was created through Special Orders Number 106 and 201 series of 2013 
to develop and draft the food defense guidance for the industry, that one that we have now. The TWG uh, represented various uh, stakeholders and relevant agencies of the government, no? um, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Health, uh, some from the academe, from the University of the Philippines, and the private sector. So there were public consultations that were conducted uh, prior to the coming up of the final uh, draft of the food defense guidance for the industry. No? So there were public consultations conducted in Davao, Cebu, and the National Capital Region. And these um, locations actually represented the major exporting regions uh, in the Philippines during that time. So the comments and recommendations that were solicited from these relevant government agencies, the academe, the private sector, and the non-government organizations um, were gathered uh, and uh, um, this paved the way for the development of the food defense guidance for the industry. So it is expected that the food defense guidance for the industry um, will provide a general overview of the food defense concepts, principles, elements, and procedures, and that this document will eventually assist the food industry in complying with current and future regulatory requirements of importing countries such as the United States, um, the European Union, or, the, or Japan, and national regulatory requirements such as that of the National Meat Inspection Service. So the history of food defense started you know, um, during the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack on the United States. And shortly after um, the, the September 11 occurrence, you know, there were um, letters uh, sent containing anthrax spores. Uh, they were mailed to several news agencies and to senators. And rumors had it that the terrorist leader, Osama bin Laden, had plans to poison U.S. water and food supplies. So after that, no, there, um, the U.S., the United States no, signed into law the Bioterrorism Act of 2002, uh, which aimed to improve the capacity of the country, of the United States, to prevent, uh, detect, and respond to terrorist acts. No? So the Bioterrorism Act of 2002 um, details how the U.S. will address emergency um, situations. No? Uh, it addresses how emergency rooms will prepare for a possible attack, including access to vaccines and the medicine stockpiles. No? It also sets up a registration program for people who handle toxins and biological agents. So, hindi lang basta-basta makapag-handle um, ang different types of uh, individuals, uh, uh, toxins, and biological agents. And it aims to protect the U.S. food and drug supply no, by requiring tougher inspection methods and closely watching what comes into the United States. No? So, there were also tweaks on the Safe Drinking Act to help protect the public um, water supply. In 2002, no, so the Homeland Security Act uh, provided the basis for the Department of Homeland Security to be responsible for protecting critical infrastructure, including food and agriculture. In 2003, the Homeland Security Presidential Directive 9 established the policy of improving intelligence emergency response, uh, mitigation strategies, and vulnerability assessments to defend food and agriculture against um, terrorism, major disasters, and other types of emergencies. So during that time, food terrorism was defined by the World Health Organization, WHO, as an act of or threat of deliberate contamination of food for human consumption um, with chemical, biological, radionuclear agents for the use, for the purpose, sorry, of causing injury or death to civilian populations and or disrupting social, economic, and political stability. So physical hazards later on have been learned to also similarly uh, be used to intentionally um, contaminate a product by a perpetrator. So hindi lang siya um, a terrorist act. No? It can be an act of someone who wants to instill um, harm no? um, to consumers or to a food system. No? So be, because of that, because of that um, uh, concept, no, 
uh, the term food terrorism eventually evolved to what it was now as food defense. So food defense has now become a part of an even bigger, larger concept of food protection, which also encompasses food safety and food quality. And currently in the U.S., the FSMA or the Food Safety Modernization Act requires the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to issue regulations in order to protect against intentional adulteration of food. So these are the several sections of FSMA that relate to intentional adulteration of food and or food defense, uh, especially the last one, uh, Section 108, National Agriculture and Food Defense Strategy. So a strategic planning document that is in the process of development. So, so these are the particular sections in the FSMA that relate to um, intentional uh, adulteration of food defense, um, giving importance to the concept of uh, protecting uh, food and water supply. So in Asia naman, um, in 2007, no, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC likewise identified food defense as having a potential impact on trade and measures were recognized as integral to protecting the food supply. So um, in 2007, APEC endorsed a set of nine uh, food defense principles no? and created an APEC food defense pilot program in 2008. Uh, this is in an effort to put the principles into practice. The Philippines was one of the four pilot economies of the APEC food defense pilot program that was conducted in 2011. And in 2012, the Department of Agriculture with the Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Product Standards as technical secretariat created a private public sector food defense technical working group or TWG and conducted a food defense awareness seminar workshop series to continue the information dissemination initiative started by APEC in 2007. And the Food Defense TWG also provided recommendations on sustainable national initiatives related to food defense. And in view of the national and international concerns on food defense, this uh, document, which is now the PNS and its annex, was drafted for the Philippine food industry. Um, the purpose of which is to provide a general overview of the food defense concepts, principles, elements, and procedures. And again, this document is hoped to assess the food industry in complying with future and current regulatory requirements, uh, both internationally and uh, locally. So the objectives and the scope of the Philippine National Standard for Food Defense Guidance for the Industry is designed no, to aid farmers and producers as well as pro pro processors of food to understand the basic concepts and principles of food defense and to develop their own food defense plan within their establishment. Specifically, the objectives of this particular document is to provide a general overview of what food defense is and to introduce the concept and the process of conducting a vulnerability assessment and to assist in developing a basic food defense plan or improving an existing food defense plan. The scope of this particular document is on retail of fresh produce or minimally, minimally processed products, aquaculture, facilities, fishing and holding vessels, meat establishments, transportation operations facilities, processing, packing, and warehousing facilities. This is not intended to be used as guidance for retail food stores and other food service establishments. So ito lang po yung scope no food defense um, guidance no, na, PN, na PNS na document. No? So from provider up to distribution. So it is not intended to be used as guidance for retail food stores and food service establishments. There are generally generally two types of food contamination. So you have unintentional or accidental contamination and then the intentional uh, contamination uh, shown in the figure. So food defense is under the intentional uh, contamination because food defense is described as the protection of food products from intentional contamination 
by biological, chemical, physical, or radiological agents that are not reasonably likely to occur in the food supply. So human intervention is the source of intentional contamination. And food defense encompasses intentional contamination, economic adulteration, disgruntled employees, sabotage, counterfeiting or diversion or tampering. And on the other hand, when we talk about food safety, um, wherein it is described as the protection of food products from unintentional contamination by agents that are reasonably likely to occur in the food supply. Uh, so that makes it different from food defense. So nature and environment are the main sources of unintentional contamination. So when we talk about food safety, it usually refers to unintentional contamination. And the agents of contamination usually are from nature or the environment. While we talk, when we talk about food, de food defense, which is intentional contamination, um, the source of the uh, contamination is human in nature. So human intervention is necessary um, for intentional contamination um, to occur. So when we talk about a food defense program, uh, it is described in the PNS as a program that is built upon four major activities, um, prevention, preparedness, mitigation response, and recovery. And it requires cross-sectoral collaboration among the government, the food industry, public health systems, academe, and the international community. So the government can develop guidance, resources, tools, training programs, research, and emergency preparedness, while the academe can train new and existing workforce and conduct research regarding food defense. While the private industries can share their best practices and sample food defense plans, and the government and the food industry can collaborate to develop policies to protect the food supply. So how do we address the intentional attacks towards safety and quality of food? So based on the PNS, no, um, you need to have a food defense plan. So the food defense plan is a well-written plan that aims to reduce the risk of intentional contamination with low-cost or no-cost mitigation measures. Um, this is hoped to be effectively implemented with the aid of a well-implemented um, prerequisite program such as food safety, uh, management system. So it is always suggested that uh, prior to the creation of a food defense plan, you already have a good or efficient food safety management system in place. And what do we intend to achieve no, um, when we create the food defense plan? So a food defense plan is a written plan to reduce the risk of intentional contamination. And so um, it wants to achieve, when we, we draft a food defense plan, we want to achieve the following. We want to help protect product and customers. Now, we want to maintain a safe working environment for employees. We want to increase establishment preparedness and facilities, uh, facilitate, and facilitate appropriate response to an emergency and to enhance the security of the establishment as well as to help uh, protect a company's bottom line or brand. So an effective food defense plan starts with a well-implemented prerequisite program, as I have mentioned. So for example, you need to have a well-implemented GM, GMP or SSOP or HACCP program in place. And some information, though, that will be used to create a food defense plan may already exist in a company's SSOP so or food recall or HACCP. So a food defense plan does not require the development of another HACCP type document. Uh, however, an, an existing HACCP plan should not be used as a substitute for a defense for a food defense plan. No? Because not all of the critical control points will be the same, considering the differences between food safety and food defense. Because HACCP is a system under food safety, uh, dif totally different from food defense. But there would be certain requirements na parehos, but um, yung critical control points identified in an HACCP plan may be totally different from the vulnerability 
points um, that may be uh, identified in the creation of a food defense plan. So a functional food defense plan may be developed develop following these uh, steps. No? So first, the development of a food defense plan um, may be done by conducting first a vulnerability assessment. Then after that, um, implementation of the food defense plan by using the defense measures identified and then testing the food defense plan by periodic monitoring of the effectiveness of the defense measures. And then periodic assessment of the food defense plan by reviewing the plan and revising as necessary, especially if there are new risks that were discovered. And lastly, maintaining and sustaining the implementation of the food defense plan to ensure that defense measures are being implemented and are still effective. So these are the steps in developing a food defense plan. So one of the very important parts of a food defense plan is to carry out a vulnerability assessment. So it is a process of identifying and prioritizing the weaknesses or the vulnerabilities in the whole food supply chain or in a food production uh, area. So in conducting a vulnerability assessment, the following general steps um, mentioned may be followed. No? So first, you need to sketch a detailed flowchart of the operation, and you need to validate it for correctness by conducting a walkthrough in the facility. This particular activity is also being carried out when you um, create an HACCT plan. After that, you identify the major processes, storage, and distribution steps, and then Afterwards, you identify vulnerabilities based on a number of criteria or depending on the vulnerability assessment tool uh, that is applicable to you. And then after that, you rank the unit operations based on the vulnerability scores or risks and then establish mitigation measures for the unit operations most vulnerable to the attack. So vulnerability assessment requires the active participation of all members of the food defense team no? um, with everyone contributing to a democratic decision making. So a food defense team should represent all the departments in the facility. So you may have uh, engineer personnel in your food defense team, somebody from production, somebody from QA, somebody from the R&D, somebody for, from the HR, for example. Uh, so it's good to have a representative from all departments in the facility, and it should be multifunctional. So the size of the food defense team depends on the size of the facility and the availability of resources. So while assessment of the contributions of people and physical structure on vulnerability of a commodity to intentional contaminations may be easily done and addressed using the um, Food Defense Plan Builder Tool no? that is a, a tool developed by the U.S. to assess gaps, uh, vulnerability assessment of food processing operations, and um, it traces each step of the process, process flow and includes uh, all sub-processing facilities found within the same area. So you can um, look for the Plan Builder Tool, tool or you can use the Plan Builder, to, builder Tool um, uh, published by the US FDA. No? So you can search that one in their uh, website and use that uh, when you also develop your food defense plan. So there are various facilitators of intentional contamination. And as we have mentioned earlier, when we um, differentiate uh, food defense from food safety, ang sabi natin, si food defense, uh, kailangan ng human intervention and your contamination is facilitated no, by human intervention. Kaya naman, um, uh, kaya naman people is a facilitator of intentional contamination and this includes personnel who have constant direct access to the process flow, delivery personnel, um, who can intentionally introduce hazards to raw materials or finished products during transport, 
um, contract cleaners, pest control service providers na may access dun sa processing facility um, during and or after food processing. Or it can be visitors who have limited time to introduce contaminants but may successfully do the job if there are weaknesses in the security in the processing area. So these types of people can be facilitators of intentional contamination. The process and the nature of the procedure of, or operation can also affect the ease of introducing contaminations to the product. So a highly manual uh, unit operation that requires long contact time with a food handler is a significantly more vulnerable um, inten uh, to intentional contamination compared to a unit operation that is fully automated and with minimal human uh, intervention. And then finally, uh, the physical structure of the facility can also be a facilitator of intentional contamination. So the physical structure of the food processing area may contribute to the vulnerability of the product towards intentional contamination. So physical barriers preventing entry to the processing area can include doors and windows, mga vents, fences, and gates. So even light and CCTV installation within and outside um, the premises or outside the processing area can influence the vulnerability of the, a particular product to attacks. The factors affecting uh, or contributing to unit operation vulnerability can be large batch sizes, uniform mixing, serving size, short shelf life, uh, food for the young, the old, the pregnant, and the immunocompromised, or the lack of processing operation and step. For large batches, uh, successful contamination of a large batch may similarly result in a large number of population that will consume the tainted product. So the bigger the lar or the larger the batch sizes, the higher the number of um, uh, consumers that will be affected. In terms of uniform mixing, a unit operation that involves constant uniform mixing is an attractive point of attack since the contaminants shall be homogeneously distributed within the food system. This ensures large number of tainted products as well. While in terms of uh, serving size, uh, a product with a serving size small enough to be consumed by the consumer in one sitting uh, containing a harmful dose of an agent is ideal for an attack since it will ensure maximum harm to the consumer. While a short shelf life product um, is preferred by attackers since these are immediately consumed in large numbers, that could uh, similarly result in large number of affected consumers. And then um, the ability to disguise the contaminant is also a factor in contributing to the operational um, vulnerability. No? So a contaminant that is not easily detectable in the food system is ideal for an attacker as well. High impact products are uh, for consumers such as children, the elderly, um, the young, the, the immunocompromised um, and pregnant no? um, is also a great factor no? to the uh, vulnerability of an operation since a successful attack of products consumed um, by uh, children and elderly or the UPs can result in greater damage to public morale. And then the lack of processing preparation steps to inactivate or reduce the harmful agent is also a factor in the operation vulnerability. Uh, some biological and chemical agents may easily be inactivated by heating and other processing steps. So how do we conduct a vulnerability assessment? No? So the PNS uh, suggests the use of Carver shock analysis. No? Um, one of the, it is one of the several tools that can be used in the identification and prioritization of uh, process-related vulnerabilities. No? So this tool can be used as a model due to its systematic uh, evaluation of potentially vulnerable unit operations. 
So, Carver shock has been described as um, or has been um, adapted from the military-based Carver program. And this was originally developed as a targeting tool for the U.S. Special Operations Forces to thoroughly analyze enemy infrastructure and identify critical nodes. Um, in, a, in a military term, a critical node or target critical damage point oh, is an element, position, or command and control entity which when disrupted immediately degrades the ability of the enemy to conduct combat operations. So hence, in the food processing environment naman, a critical node is that particular unit or operation that when successfully attacked, for example, could result in significant public health and economic impact. So that is how um, a vulnerability assessment is being carried out using the Carver Shock Analysis. So the Carver Shock Analysis is an offensive targeting prioritization, prioritization tool. Um, it allows the, the user you know, of this particular system to think like an attacker and identify the most attractive targets in the processing area or in the food supply chain uh, for attacks. Uh, it allows the organization or the food business to focus resources on protecting the most vulnerable points in their food supply chain or in their food processing facility. So CARVER is actually an acronym for the six attributes, namely criticality, accessibility, recuperability, vulnerability, effect, and recognizability. So when we talk about um, Carver, each of these attributes, um, the C-A-R-V-E-R um, acronym, uh, are attributes that can be objectively scored no, on a scale of 1, uh, which, is, which has the least risk, or 10, which is the greatest risk. No? So you, each of these, you, you, you give a score of at least 1 or a maximum of 10. And... Um, in the PNS, in the PNS, there is a matrix uh, for you to refer to um, to evaluate to evaluate each of these attributes. No? So comparisons of the combined scores from all seven attributes of a unit operation in a process flow allows the food defense team no, to identify the uh, critical nodes that need immediate mitigation. So with the use of the Carver shock analysis. Um, the food defense team is able to identify uh, nodes that are that should be uh, a priority when it comes to um, uh, carrying out mitigation strategies. So when we talk about uh, criticality, it measures the economic and public impact of an attack to the food system. While when we talk about accessibility, it refers to the ease of physical access and aggress from the target food system or unit operation. So how um, easily the attacker can access that particular target operation or how easily can he egress from that particular um, target food system or unit operation. R, um, which refers to recoup uh, recuperability, assesses how a particular manufacturing system recovers from an attack should it survive, while uh, V, or vulnerability, measures the ease of accomplishing the intentional contamination of a food system. And um, effect refers to a measurement of the economic impact of an attack from loss in production. And uh, lastly, recognizability uh, refers to the um, ease of identifying the target unit uh, operation. So, um, Carver plus shock, uh, shock assesses the health, economic, and psychological impacts of the attack. So, the Carver shock analysis is being used to assess the different um, vulnerabilities of, uh, of a food safety um, facility or sorry, of a food facility or um, food supply chain. 
So when you have identified um, your vulnerable points uh, through the Carver Shock method, you know, um, the food defense team has already identified the vulnerable points in the food supply chain or in the food processing area. Um, they can now plan the mitigation strategies. No? So mitigation strategies are um, preventive measures you know, that the food companies or the food industry may choose to implement in an effort to better protect the facility, um, its personnel, and operations from the identified uh, vulnerabilities. So mitigation strategies could reduce you know, um, product exposure um, and unseen personnel movement, uh, as well as accessibility for direct or indirect contamination of food and ease of addition of contaminants or agents. No? So when we um, do mitigation strategies or when we develop mitigation strategies or when we assign mitigation strategies, we plan per components. So steps must be taken to ensure the proper implementation of each um, mitigation, mitigation strategy. And then um, we also need to monitor you know, the implementation of the mitigation strategies. So establishment, implement, and implementing procedures, and then include frequency with which they are um, performed. And then after that, um, there should be uh, corrective actions um, uh, identified no? uh, if ever the, the mitigation strategies are not properly implemented. No? So a new response or a new corrective action. And then we need to conduct verification activities that would ensure that monitoring is being conducted and appropriate decisions and corrective actions are um, being made. So in terms of uh, mitigation strategies for facilities, no, there should be designated parking areas for personnel and visitors and distinguish vehicles using parking labels or other identification para agad na lalaman kung yung pumasok ba na, na vehicle or personnel or visitor ay um, employee siya, visitor siya, supplier siya, no, a uh, pest control provider siya, no. Um, so yun, so kailangan um uh, madali silang uh, na-identify through parking labels or other types of identification. And then it's also good to implement a check-in or check-out procedure at security or reception areas that includes verification of proper identification, screening of equipment, and relinquishment of prohibited items. No? So actually, nagagawa ito sa um, mga malls. No? Uh, meron ng um, procedure uh, at the entrance. No? Um, although, no, um, in as well-established uh, food processing plants or uh, food processing uh, in, or in the food industry, no, um, meron na talagang um, proper implementation of check-in and check-out procedure. No? Um, merong nag-check or nag-verify kung um, ikaw ba ay uh, listed as one of the visitors for that particular day. No? Um, Sinescreen yung daladala mong equipment kung meron man. For example, if you are a pest controller, ano yung mga equipment are you bringing in to the plant? No? And then um, relinquishment of prohibited items. No? And then um, there is also a need to implement a policy for driver check-in and vehicle documentation review. No? And then implement a policy for scheduling deliveries uh, as well as um, uh, yung mga maintenance uh, schedules. No? So hindi basta-basta um, anytime pwedeng mag-deliver or mag-carry out ng mga uh, maintenance. activities. So, I remember um, when I was working in the industry, usually schedule ang, ang deliveries from suppliers, so only from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. No? So, suppliers that um, will tend to deliver in the afternoon, usually, hindi na sila pinapapasok and usually they are advised to deliver the following day. No? While maintenance uh, activities like, for example, um, uh, cleaning and sanitation or pest control or for example calibration of equipment no this is usually being carried out during non production days no para may nakabantay dun sa mga magkakandak ng maintenance activities at the same time na mo monitor din yung activity nila at um walang food product na nasa loob or walang food na um uh, in process na nasa loob dahil kinakarry out nila yung particular na activity na yun 
on a non-production day. So when you have carried, when you have identified your mitigation strategies, um, there are also resource requirements, no, um, in the um, establishment of a food defense plan. No, so these are signages, padlocks, no, for uh, doors, for warehouses, no, uh, identification cards of employees, no, um, and even visitors, no, log books, uh, forms, time logs, no, um, body clock or ang iba biometrics na no color coded working outfits para nanalaman kung um in a particular uh food company anong division ka no um i remember when i was working in the food industry iba yung iba yung um color ng caps no ng um, mga taga warehouse iba yung color ng um hair cap ng mga taga packing no iba yung color ng hair cap ng um uh, for delivery no so nalalaman ka agad na um ah yung taga yung pumasok na yon hindi siya taga warehouse kasi hindi red yung kanyang cap no kasi ang mga taga warehouse red yung kanilang hair cap so color coded working outfits additional lighting especially sa mga areas na may mga uh, may na identify na vulnerable points no roving guards no or alarm system CCTV no or perimeter fence no these are resource requirements that can uh, enable you to implement um, a good uh, defense uh, program or plan. Um, apart from the resource requirements, a uh, training program uh, should be defined to ensure that personnel of a particular food industry are aware of the food defense system and understand their responsibilities in its effective implementation. No? So there are several training tools that were de developed no, um, by various organizations and by the USFDA no, that may be used as reference no, um, to, to conduct training uh, on food defense for um, employees. No. So Employee First, FIRST is an acronym, is a USFDA training program designed to educate frontline workers on the first line of um, defense in preventing intentional contamination of the food supply. No. Um, you can access uh, more uh, training tools no, in the USFDA website, no, uh, especially on food defense. So when we talk about employee first, no, um, ito yung, it's, a, it's an acronym. No? So follow company's food defense plan. I stands for inspect your work area and surrounding areas. R, recognize anything out of the ordinary. Um, S, secure all ingredients, supplies, and finished products. And T, tell management if you notice anything unusual or suspicious. Kasi malaki yung, yung role ng isang employee in the um, prevention of uh, intentional contamination. No? Malaki ang role ng ang isang employee in the implementation of a food defense plan. No? Because they, if they are um, uh, long-term employees, no? um, konti lang na out of the, the ordinary in their surroundings, they can easily identify. And with that, um, with the training that you provide for them, they can be empowered to tell you anytime if they notice anything unusual or suspicious. And then there is also ALERT. No? So ALERT is an initiative uh, a training program intended to raise awareness of, of uh, state and local government agencies and industry representatives in the U.S. on food defense issues and preparedness. So it applies to all aspects of the farm-to-table um, na food supply chain. So it identifies five key food defense points. Uh, A, uh, in the alert, stands for how do you assure no, that the supplies and ingredients you use are from safe and secure sources. No? Uh, so one of which would be supplier um uh dito um supplier audits no or um assessment or evaluation of suppliers no l no how do you look after the security of the products and ingredients in your facility e stands for what do you know about your employees and people coming in and out of your facility no so nagba background check ka ba ng um, people that you hire. No? R, could you provide reports about the security of your products while under your control? So this talks about traceability. 
What do you and who do you notify if you have a threat on issue at a facility, including suspicious behavior? You know? So the US FDA developed the Food Defense 101 um, training program you know, um, uh, in order to empower you know, uh, people working in the food industry you know, um, to be uh, alert you know, to ensure uh, product safety. You know? Um, to assure consumers no, that they look after their products and that they could provide reports about the security of their products uh, anytime under their control. And then when you have developed already your food defense plan, you're able to um, list down your mitigation strategies. You have already your resources. No, you have conducted trainings for your personnel. No? You need to ensure its effectiveness uh, through conduct of audits and um, corrective actions. So the facility should establish internal quality audit to verify you know, the effectiveness of the food defense plan. So it, the internal audit will help give objective evidence or proof that the food defense plan is carried out effectively in the facility. So records of internal audit. Uh, and noted non-conformities shall be given attention by the management of the company for continuous improvement, assess capability of facility processes, etc. And audit findings um, from the internal auditing will serve as evidence uh, or benchmark data for the effectiveness of the policy, procedure, or requirement. So verification of the corrective action should also be made to ensure conformity to the requirements. So these are some of the documents and records that you need um, in order to effectively carry out the food defense plan. So your vicinity map, your floor plan, emergency evacuation plan, crisis management contingency plan, human resource training program, traceability and recall program, and personnel security measures. You also have your early security roving report, yung report ng security guard, training attendance report if you have conducted uh, food defense training to your personnel, daily attendance sheet, visitor supplier entrance slip, loading and unloading inspection report, product recall exercise form, chemical hazards or material control log, food defense plan review form, um, because after some time you need to conduct a review of your food defense plan. Yeah. Um, and then record of food defense plan testing as well as your CCTV recordings if you have CCTVs installed. So um, th that is all in terms of the details on the Philippine National Standard uh, on food defense. No? Um, if you want to have a copy of, the, of that, no? um, you can just access that through this link. No? Uh, so... I hope you have learned something about um, food defense guidance for the uh, industry. And uh, if you have questions, I can entertain them now. Thank you very much. Yeah, And salamat po, Ms. Shena, for the comprehensive presentation po about the Philippine National Standards 134-2013 Food Defense Guidance for Industry. So after po ng presentation ni Ma, uh, dadako na po tayo sa ating question and answer portion. So kung may mga katanungan po ang ating mga audience, kindly type in na lang po sa ating comment section upang masagot po ito ng ating resource per speaker po ngayon. So habang wala po pong magtatanong, uh, Ms. Shena, pwede po magtanong po if meron na pong industry in the Philippines na yung nakita na gumagawa po nung food defense plan po? Ang um, sa pagkakaalam po, meron na, uh, especially those who export to other countries, uh, especially the the US or uh, the European Union, no? uh, kasi mostly hinahanapan sila ng food defense plan. And may I just mentioned kasi I think from the chat, uh, from the comments uh, in the, in the, well, the lecture is going on i think sir uh, sir cram also um shared a document no uh this is from the uk no uh, a guide also a, a guide to protecting and defending food and drink from deliberate attack no i think that is a that is a good um resource as well uh because this particular document 
uh, did not use the carver shock as a means to determine vulnerabilities in the food supply chain. So, ang ginamit niya, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, TACCP ang term nila. So, yun yung ginamit nila na system uh, in order to determine the vulnerabilities. Pero yung sa Philippines kasi, because mo, uh, I think our guidelines were patterned to that of the of the US, ang ginamit natin ay carver shock. But that is a very good uh, source uh, um, when you are planning to uh, create your own uh, food defense plan. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Thank you po. Uh, meron po ang nakita dito. Question po from Sir Benedict Paul Cruz. Uh, may I know the po if how can you apply food defense on the primary producers po? Sorry, the question is how? How can, how can you apply food defense on the primary producers? Primary producers. Actually, um, as I have mentioned in the first segment ng talk, uh, based on the uh, guidelines or the PNS, ang cover talaga is from the primary producers up to the distributors. No? Um, kasi if you take a look, uh, although kasi yung talk natin is is more focused on the guidelines itself, no, but uh, I I I can carry out another talk on a primer on on food defense and um, ang actually lahat ng establishment. Uh, lahat ng aspects ng, ng food supply chain, you can apply uh, food defense because uh, kahit saan doon, there is a possibility of intentional contamination. So, hindi lang po food manufacturing or food processing ang, ang pwedeng maging a victim ng isang food defense incident or maging victim ng isang intentional contamination. So, for example, in a farm, um, kasi um, there is an ex uh, in, in the U.S. No, na, na food defense uh, guidelines and training. May isa silang example doon. No? Uh, I would just share this para uh, in, in light of the question. No? Ang naging example nila ay it was a farm and um, ang naging um, contamination doon is uh, there's a particular terrorist group na naglagay sila ng um, uh, parang microorganisms dun sa car, uh, dun sa truck ng animals na nagtatrans, anong uh, yung truck na nagta-transport ng animals to the farm. So, uh, it's not a manufacturing area, it's not a it's not a processing plant, it's actually a farm, no? And ang ang naging um target ng attack is yung uh, farm vehicle. So, ang balak nila is to spread a certain animal disease in order to uh, hijack the economy of that of the state, no? So, kaya Mag, nag, pwedeng possible din na that can happen not just to food manufacturers but also to to food producers no uh, even those who do not um, carry out uh, processing activities so remember also that um, intentional contamination hindi lahat ng intentional contamination is a terrorist act it can also be an act of uh, for example a disgruntled employee so pwedeng ang purpose lang niya is um, to create uh, parang hindi maganda na na or to create um a bad name for your brand no pwedeng ganun or pwedeng ang intention niya is uh, to take revenge for example may na fire ka na employee tapos um gusto niyang mag-revenge sa so ang intention niya is to take revenge against the owner of the of that particular farm or that particular food business so hindi lahat ng uh, food defense incident ay created ng isang terrorist group or the purpose of which is terrorism or to or to destabilize uh, economy no um pwedeng ang purpose lang niya is talagang mag-revenge lang siya or um nagagalit siya doon sa owner pwedeng ganun Ayan po. Uh, we have another question po dito from Ms. Uh, Zariz. Uh, sabi po niya, good afternoon po ma. Meron po bang term ang food uh, defense plan? If meron po, ilang years uh, Ilang years po usually? Thank you po. Is this term of implementation or uh, how long? Uh, for example, kung nag-create ka na, how long will it be effective? Yun ba yung tanong? Or which, which one? Uh, yes um, po ma'am. How long dapat siya? 
uh, from the time that you have your business, wala pa. Kasi based on the, wala pa naman tayong, um, kumbaga, um, requirement no uh, from government agencies no na required talaga siya no um what we have currently now is just a guideline so it's actually and then wala pang na nakikreate na food defense program no um uh, i think ang ang mag ang mag-initiate nito ay NMIS no based doon sa um NMIS specifically the Bureau on Enforcement no um pero since wala pa uh, wala pa namang so voluntary siya no so uh, if you do not intend to carry out now, kasi wala ka pa namang need, no? uh, hindi ka naman pinipilit. No? Um, but if you currently have, if you have already drafted your food defense plan, na-implement mo na siya, ang, kung ang question ay, how long uh, does it last? No? Yung, yung plan na yun, like, uh, depende. No? Kasi if you change, there are changes in the operation, there are changes in the processes, uh, there is a change in the facility mismo, then you need to review from time to time because there might be changes that you need to initiate in your food defense plan. No? So as long as my changes dun sa operations, my changes dun sa facility, even the organizational uh, changes, you might want to revisit your plan in order to check if it's still efficient or or still working uh, considering your current uh, circumstance dun sa food business. For our okay. next question, please. Uh, from Vince Molo Marzonia, how can food defense plan be integrated to the lessons in SHS, especially disaster readiness and risk, de risk reduction? Um, I have no idea uh, regarding um, education in the senior high school, no, sorry. Um, but... Uh, so hindi ko alam kung how DRRR is being uh, tackled in in senior high school no? pero definitely uh, food defense kasi is a cons uh, unlike food safety um wherein usually ang nagiging sangkot if there is a food safety uh, incident ang nagiging involved ay um, FDA for example and the food bis food business sector food sector no? pag may food defense kasi na incident um it can be treated as uh, especially if it's a terrorist act it can be treated actually, actually as uh, something more serious no um because it involves security of the state so possible na pwede siyang ma-integrate um uh, pero siguro to a level that is um that will be appreciated by senior high school students um pero as of now the, the food uh, defense uh, based on the pns is um as i was drafted no specifically for the for the food industry Okay po, for our uh, next question po, uh, pag-processing ng tableya, uh, need pa po ng food defense plan, small business po? Um, again, since wala pa pong required, uh, wala pa naman pong law na nagsasabi na required ang food defense, no? Uh, depende po sa need ng, ng isang uh, food business, no? Um, most of the food businesses that I know that already that has already a food defense plan in place are those that export no um but it's good no na pag start ng business mo you already have a food defense plan in place as well no? so um lahat naman siguro ng businesses aim to grow bigger and uh, to export no as well no so kahit hindi ka nag export there is still a chance that there's intentional contamination that might happen sa food business mo so regardless kung uh, small siya or big siya um if you have a food defense in place or food defense plan in place, kampante ka na you are prepared for the possibility of intentional contamination. Ayan. Thank you po, ma'am. That was our last question po for the topic discussed by Ms. Shena. Ma'am, thank you po ulit sa pagpapaunak po sa aming ngayong araw po to discuss po yung ating PNS. Uh, super thankful po kami sa pag-discuss po. Uh, very comprehensive po siya and very naintindihan po namin in this level po yung ating food defense guidance po. Thank you Ayan for the invitation, ma'am. 
Ayan po, salamat po Mili Michelle sa pagpapaunlak sa aming uh, upang maging speaker ngayong araw na ito. At uh, ako, marami akong natutunan dito, Brooke, habang nakikinig kanina. And I guess na, and I hope na mar- mas maraming natutunan yung ating mga viewers, lalo na yung mga nag-aaral ng food tech. So, yun po. Thank you. Ayan. Thank you. Uh, tama, Miss Pam. Sobrang uh, understandable and very clear yung mga diniska sa atin. And yung mga questions very relevant, I think. And yung mga, nas- yung mga sagot ni Ma'am is very comprehensive din. And nasagot niya mismo yung mga patanungan ng ating mga live viewers. So, uh, may mga nakikita ako sa ating comment section kanina about sa ating certificate. Uh, sa mga nagtatanong po, ang ating certificate po na matatanggap ngayong araw ay Certificate of Attendance dahil wala po itong CPD points. Uh, tayo po ay makakakuha nito kapag nag-submit po tayo ng evaluation or feedback form sa after po nitong webinar. Uh, siguraduhin na po ulit natin ang ating mga spellings, ating pangalan at email address ay tama. At uh, about naman po sa attendance check sa mga hindi po nakasama, Uh, sinasagawa lang po ito sa unang bahagi po ng webinar upang malaman lang po kung saan mga sector nang galing ang ating mga participants. Uh, Nagpa-close din po ito kaagad after po ng ilang minutes. Uh, so huwag po tayong mabahala dahil hindi naman po ito kasama sa pamantayan para makakuha po ng certificate. Regarding naman po sa pretest, ito po ay naibigay bago po magsimula ang ating webinar at na-flash po sa screen and sa comment section ang pretest link. Uh, Nagpa-close din po ito before po mag-start yung, yung discussion po ng ating speaker. So, yun na po sa ating mga paalala, Ms. Alms. Bago tayo magtungo sa ating huling tatalakayin, tayo ay magkakaroon muna ng 10 minutes health break para sa mga CCR. Kasi mamaya, uh, alam ko, mas uh, marami pa ang tututok sa ating uh, webinar.
Welcome back sa ating mga live viewers. Uh, kasalukuyan, we have 259 live viewers, Brooke. So, wag na natin patagalin. Take it away, Brooke. Well, thank you, Miss Alps. Uh, para po sa ating ikalawang paksa ng ating webinar, para po mag-share ng experience related sa food defense, narito po ang ating eksperto na magbabahagi ng kanyang paalaman at kasanayan Uh, siya po ay nagtapos sa kursong BS Food Technology sa UP Diliman. May diploma po siya sa Supply Management and Training in Program Management. Siya ay may kasanayan sa ISO 9001-2008 or Quality Management System, sa ISO 190011 or Auditing Systems, Good Agricultural Practices, Good Manufacturing Practices, Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points or HACCP, at Food Safety, Risk Assessment, and Food Defense. Uh, kasulukuyan po siyang nagtatrabaho sa New Zealand bilang Quality Assurance Manager sa Sanford Limited. Uh, let's all welcome, welcome po si Ms. Lara Navarro. Uh, magandang hapon po, ma'am. Hmm, magandang hapon. I think magandang gabi dito sa New Zealand. It's 7 o'clock. <laughs> So, as uh, Miss 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 Brooke said na nasa New Zealand ako but I think um si Alma alam niya na I'm also from Bath previously before I shifted here in New Zealand. <laughs> yes po ma'am. Good, good evening po. Good evening. And uh, uh, thank you po sa pagpapauna. Ah uh, ibibigay na po namin ang platform sa inyo to discuss po ang inyong presentation. Okay. So I just press the share button ano. Yes, two Okay. Slide. Oops. Oops. So just a moment. Share screen. Share screen. So, is everyone able to see my presentation? Yes, two Yes, two Okay. Sige. So, as Brooke and Alma said, uh, I was invited para magbigay nung oh, down, new experience in developing and implementing a food defense program para dun sa industry. I think, um, yung dati kong boss si Ma'am Karen <laughs> chatted me. So, anyway, so, I think the scope of my presentation today would be dealing with how we actually, what are the contents in um, a food defense program when we implement it in um For the industries that I work with, it would be a seafood processing um, industry and as well as um, meat processing establishment. So just to give you a... Oh, oh my God. Here. Just to give you a brief background, I have worked in a seafood processing facility when I started here in New Zealand. Um, uh, the company was Konon and... NZ, um, it's yung tahong, so it's called um, New Zealand Green Shell Mussel. So the c certificates that we carried and uh, that we maintained would be yung mandatory requirement ng New Zealand, which is a risk management program. We also have halal certification, and that this is um, private um, or a private standard, ang tawag nila BRC, the Food Safety Module, or the British Retail Consortium um, Standard. We also have this um, ethical audit called SMETA and a supply chain security audit. So, again, lahat yan may components ng food defense uh, at mga requirements on um, assessing vulnerability of, of the products. So, when I work with the meat processing plant, uh, I just... Um, I think uh, up until last May, uh, ganun din yung certifications na minamaintain ko as technical manager. So the main requirement of um, risk management program as per um, New Zealand requirements, then we have halal, of course, before a meat plant, ethical audits, um, OSMIT requirements for the consumers, uh, 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 animal welfare requirements, and even ISO 9001 and 14001 for both quality management system and environmental management systems. And in my new role for Sanford's, ibang um, standard naman 
uh, pero it's similar dun sa ISO 22000 or the food safety standard, FSC 22000. They also have a requirement on implementing a food defense system para sa planta. And I put in here yung MSC um, certification, which is also a, a food assurance um, certification. So may component din siya ng um, uh, kumbaga, identity preservation, kung resourcing para and sustainable fishery um, requirements. So ilahat yan konektado dun sa vulnerability assessments and threat assessments para sa produktong um, pinaprocess ng mga plantang yan. So, I think iba naman ngayon, I'll give you um, um NZ perspective para ma makita natin yung connection ng mga requirements under um when you are processing here in New Zealand and when you are exporting and then also when you are working with certain customers so um that's the first part of my presentation so just a quick background sabi ko dito ang step 1 is of course parang sa mga processors dito kailangan registered ka ng FDA di ba so sa New Zealand ang minimum requirement or the main requirement para ka makapag-process um um here in New Zealand is you have a registered risk management program so um a risk management program is a doc documented program it is um based on the principles of HACCP so nilagay ko dito the RMP is equal to HACCP which requires you to have um PRPs, di ba, yung mga prerequisite programs mo. At may component din siya ng wholesomeness, which are the quality factors. Kasi for HACCP, it um, concentrates on the food safety risks ba, and controlling those risks. For RMP, it also includes um, managing wholesomeness or yung quality aspects of um, your products, as well as um, managing yung labeling requirements mo or truth to labeling. So, it has a plus plus kumbaga sinasabi nila ang RMP so before it is the minimum requirement for you to be able to um produce um food products here in New Zealand so um sinasabi sa so under yung model ng New Zealand that um having an RMP is a major step in the development of a uh, regula regulatory center to um what's this private or industry-centered um, implementation of food safety. I think that's also the wisdom behind the Food Safety Act sa atin, di ba? Yung primary, primary responsibility of food safety lies on the operators. So, step two, if you're allowed to, um, uh, what's this, operate in New Zealand, pag gusto mong mag-export, again, meron kang um, kailangang sundin na export export requirements. For New Zealand, I think it's really quite easy kasi um, na-consolidate nila yung requirements. So, um, yung parang um, DA natin dyan, ang tawag natin, namin dito is MPI, the Ministry of Primary Industries. So, they have a branch that they call the Overseas Market Access Directorate, parang ganon. Ano? So, they issue certain parang technical bulletins or it's guides. So when you want to export to US, for example, we have a document um, uh, uh, called the US OMAR. Tapos in update na lang nila yung palagi. So may sections yon yung gen general requirements for um, for the US. Tapos may sections ng um, requirements for exporting meat or when you want to export um, seafood products. So kanya kanyang sections yon. So Again, you have an RMP, and if you want to export, you have to meet certain OMAR requirements or what we call overseas market access requirements. So um, the OMARs are specific for each country. So examples ng OMARs na yan would be may mga countries na kailangan ng um, listing. So maga apply ka sa kanila para. Parang I think sa EU, di ba, there, there's what you call a third country listing. For the US, there's a registration. I think Japan, Korea, and China would require listing for all um, establishments here in New Zealand wanting to export to their country. So 
ginawa kong example dito for meat plants exporting to the major markets uh, like EU, the US, and China, ang nire-require nila may veterinarian galing dun sa regulator. So, saan baga? sa atin, NMIS, siguro yan, ano, na yung veterinarian na yon dapat naka, naka-assign sa specific export uh, market na meat plant. So, that's one requirement under certain countries. Tapos, um, there are also overseas market requirements uh, in line with sampling requirements, testing requirements, and other processing requirements. So, uh, for example, the so meat plant, uh, I think in general pala, if you want to export to EU, we have to make sure we have a water testing uh, program that um, is consistent with the EU requirements. So it's monthly sampling. Tapos yung uh, monthly sampling and testing uh, depends sa water usage mo. So may group A, group B silang requirements. Group A would be micro requirements. Group B would be, um, I think, the chemical requirements for testing water. So yan yung additional na mga um, programs na ina-add namin sa risk management program namin sa mga programa sa planta for compliance in able to um, pro, uh, do processing in New Zealand and also the export requirements. So step three, ito yung tinutawag nating customer requirements. So so nagbukas na yung um, market mo para sa ibang bansa, di ba? But you'll have to find your customers. Hindi mo naman pwedeng ship mo sa sa country, uh, the importing country, but you'll have to have already contacts, diba? So, so for the three plants that I have worked with and, and working with, um, we have certain customers, ano? So, um, I think yung big supermarket chains, example nyan, yung Woolworths, so Australia, um, what else? Uh, if for the meat plant, for example, if we supply to McDonald's para sa burger patties, yung mince, yung mince nila, yung mince meat. So, may certain additional requirements pa sila. So, what I find in general, yung customer requirement, nanghihingi sila nung tinatawag na nilang ano, certificates uh, of a relevant GFSI standard. So, ano tong GFSI standard? Later on, I will... Um, give you an um, overview of the GFI standards. So uh, I think for for the Philippines, we've uh, introduced the global gap schema, no? So there are these are essentially internationally recognized standards, but it is these are private standards developed by industries and trade associations. So um, I think the first slide I've showed you, uh, I was working with BRC certification and also FSSC certification. So, yun yung mga hinahabol pa rin naming additional requirements uh, apart from the food safety requirements of New Zealand, the other food safety and probably SPS and TBT requirements of export markets. And then we also work uh, with the customers, ano? Uh, for their other requirements. So, makikita nyo sa picture na to, I put in pictures ng sandbox. So, ang sabi kasi nila, so yung RMP sandbox model, if you want to play or for processors, di ba, yan yung scope mo, nung operations mo, yan yung site map mo, dyan mo ginagawa sa sandbox na yan lahat ng activities mo when you process. Kung gusto mong i-embellish at gusto mong maraming kumbaga makapansin dun sa sandbox mo, you go and you want to do the exporting, you embellish your ano sandbox. So dito sa pangalawang picture, meron na siyang bench. So that's an embellishment, that's an additional requirement apart from your sandbox. But sandbox. But again, noting that all your operations are well within that particular sandbox. So, no? And then, kung gusto mong mas bongga, na yan, meron ng, anong tawag siya, may um, umbrella na, no? may, meron ng other embellishments, this might be a requirement of a customer, for example, or a requirement of um, a special friend na gusto ko may, ano na, may, ang tawag dyan, may, may, 
tarpaulin na or something para mas maganda yung sandbox. So you also have to adhere with what the customer requires. So yan yung parang analogy when you want to operate in, um, in a food processing environment. So um, before I go to that um, certain requirements under the um, GFSI standards, I think this probably, because I wasn't able to uh, view the presentations of the other speakers, this is just um, a section on the food defense and what it means, right? So I think um, the previous um, pre presenter had said that um, food safety management systems, we have the HACCP for food safety risks. The food defense would be the threats I know you a threat assessment critical control point. So you assess your threats. So what's um, under food defense is um, yung mga um, intentional adulteration. So whether it's by uh, terrorism um, or essentially yung motivation is harm for, for certain disgruntled employees. That's where you do your threat assessment, and then. Um, there's also a requirement for um, uh, some private standards to, to do uh, VASAP or yung vulnerability assessment, yung in, intentional adulteration, which is economically motivated. So, ano yung examples nito? So, I think for yung mas mataas ang presyo sa market na mga produkto, katulad ng organic products, um, for New Zealand, I think it's what what they brand as um, manuka honey. Yan, yung honey usually, yan ang mataas ang vulnerability for substitution. So, uh, hinihingan din ang industry ng um, VASAP um, assessments and how to control those risks. So, dito sa left side ng picture, may kita nyo na sinabi ko for foods, safety and food quality, it usually falls under the requirements of the RMP, the minimum requirements of New Zealand and overseas market access requirements. But for food defense and food fraud, these are mostly driven by customer requirements. Unless, of course, I think particularly e US and EU, the, you, it's required to have, have um, certain food defense um, schemes under your food safety management system. So you, the other presenters might have had uh, explained this to all of you. So food defense and the difference of food HACCP, TASAP, and VASAP. Ano? Again, as mentioned, food for food safety, it's HACCP. And for food defense, it's um, the threats in your process and in your products. And for food fraud, it's the vulnerability. And it's usually economically motivated. So intentional adulteration or substitution of products. So these are just examples of uh, certain instances of food ter terrorism that requires food defense. Ano, sinasabi dito in Oregon in the U.S., it's a sabotage because they contaminated um, salad bars uh, with salmonella. So bucket siya naging, uh, ano yung driver dito, it was because there was a local election. So, siguro yung mga but, hindi ko alam kung anong nangyay. Sa Pilipinas, may ganyan bang scheme nung uh, election. So, they wanted to sabotage the results of the election. So, it was a food terrorism incident. So, this one naman, another example was I think when I just really started here in New Zealand. Um, it's, um, I, whether I was not able to follow this one. I think it was just a disgruntled employee. So needle in strawberries case in Australia. So they put needles dun sa, anong tawag nun? Dun sa strawberry panets na uh, binibenta sa supermarkets. So I think it was... Uh, uh, done in the farm, one of the farm workers. And the other incidents were just copycat incidents. Alam mo naman, kung, hindi ko alam kung uso na ang TikTok noon, but um, in New Zealand, there was also that scare in, at that time. So in here, it was reported in um, 
uh, in New Zealand that uh, a person admits that she planted a needle inside a strawberry but it was just um, really um, a copycat incident so there is also again young vulnerability assessment I know for um, economic sabotage or young um, parang sa atin parang pag smuggle ng goods ano so sinasabi nila dito lalo na to sa mga loading loadout um, containers ano uh, itong pictures sa kanan would be the bolt seals yan yung nilalagay sa container so when you load products finished goods to be exported to certain markets may mga seals yan at kinokontrol yan so um, dito sa New Zealand yung MPI yung regulator ang nagbibigay ng seals na yan at uh, yung serial number kailangan ng record at kailangan nagtatali so, kapag tampered yung seal ng container, it might mean na may, may kinuha, may ninakaw, may inismuggle. So, um, so, that's also one of those um, instances where you'd have to be, you'd have to have a good um, system of securing your goods. So, for the next part of my presentation, ito yung, um, kumbaga yung experience namin, no? experience when implementing and um, developing that food, food, defense, um, food defense plan for the different companies I worked with. So, again, I mentioned it's mostly driven by the customer requirements for us. So, I think I've mentioned BRC, uh, the British Retail Consortium Standards, and also FSSC. So FSSC is um, an offshoot of um, the. It's based on the ISO twenty two thousand or the Food Safety uh, Management System programs. Ano? So yun yung dalawang customer standards na I had experience with it, that requires in their um, standards um, being able to develop and implement a food safety uh, a food defense system. So as I mentioned, as mentioned here, major retail retailers require processors to be certified under a recognized um, GFSI standard. So this one um, is uh, the actual requirements under the BRC, the BRC, um, the British Retail Consortium standard. So under um, Section Four of their standard, uh, they require uh, that. Um, Processors should have a site security and food defense um, management system. So um, these systems shall protect products, the premises, and the brands from malicious actions while under the control of the site. So jan yung encompassing requirement na kailangan mo create ng plan, food defense plan. So ang unang unang step is really to do um threat assessment, and you have to document your um threat assessment so a documented risk assessment of the potential risks to the product from any deliberate attempt to inflict contamination or damage so yung assessment mong gagawin you have to consider both internal threats in your um, um, system and in your site and external threats and also you'd have to also include uh, market intelligence and new risks for your products, whether um, kung ano yung mga emerging risks, kailangan mo ring i antag don, um, kailangan mo ring i consider when you do your threat assessment. It is really similar to how you deal with or how you do your HACCP, de ba yung um, hazard analysis, critical control points. But iba lang yung mga tinitingnan mong mga points or um, assessment points in your system. So, sinasabi rin where raw materials or products are identified as being at particular risk, the threat assessment plan shall include, include controls to mitigate these risks. So, there are certain products na, kumbaga, from farm to the processor, medyo mahaba yung, uh, ang tawag doon, mga steps na kailangan niyang pagdaanan bago makapunta sa inyong processing site, kailangan iisa-isahin mo yon Ano yung ano yung threat dito? Meron bang threat na 
mas magal to o mahijack o so yun yung ganong um, kabusisi na lahat ng steps from from uh, for us yung muscles kasi dito o yung tahong dito sa New Zealand for example uh, farm siya so fina farm siya ng uh, uh, Fina farm siya dito. So, dun sa previous company ko, sa Kono, there are both um, company-owned farms at yung mga farmers that uh, we have contract with. So, sabi nila, mas mataas ang risk dun sa farmer-owned versus company-owned kasi konti, mas, mas malaki yung control mo, di ba, kapag own ng company. So, again, i-consider mo yun. Anong, anong threat dun sa farmer? Uh, farmer owned, baka kung disgruntled yung farmer dahil sa contract payment scheme nyo, isabotage niya. Pero again, um, yun yung mga considerations and yun yung mga questions na itatanong mo when you start doing your um, threat assessment. So, sinasabi din, areas where a significant risk is identified shall be defined, monitored, and controlled. So, um, technically, yung area critical areas at reception kasi jan minsan may shift ng ownership ng product di ba from supplier to your um, processing facility so ano yung risk doon and also at load out kasi jan kailangan marami ring um, controls yung bolt bolt seal sa container yung tawag nila dito official assurance yung electric electronic certification. So yung mga export certification documents dapat tugmayan. So I think in my in previous in the previous company I worked with may mga uh, instances na kailangan namin i-report sa regulator namin na mali yung bilang ng karton na ipinasok namin sa container. So kailangan i-notify namin yung yung MPI, yung regulator namin, at yung regulator ang magno-notify sa customs na um, uh, the operator had notified this and that para uh, pag chinek nila yung container, magtutugma lahat ng papel. Kasi pag hindi nagtugma ang papel, uh, may tendency pabalikin yung container from New Zealand to China or from New Zealand to Germany, babalik siya. So, it, it incurs cost para sa... Um, para sa company and what else uh, another um, requirement here under the BRC standard is where required by legislation the site shall maintain appropriate registrations with relevant um, authorities I think as mentioned it's US that requires um, registration of your facilities as well as I think an EU um, regulation requiring you to have a registration of your facility. So those are just examples. So pasensya na medyo maliit yung pinagsama-sama ko yata lahat. Yung requirement on Section 5 under the BRC. So this one deals with the vulnerability of your um, product. Yung product authenticity, claims, and chain of custody. So it's really similar to when you have your organic, when you have your halal systems or halal certification, on, um, sinasabi nila that um, you have to have systems to minimize the risk of purchasing fraudulent or adulterated food raw materials to ensure that all product descriptions and claims are legal, accurate, and verified. So, for example, dun sa meat establishment that I've worked with, uh, meron silang system. I think they call it the farm assured system. So kailangan from the from the farm alam nila yung farm assured status nung lahat nung sheep I think and the beef uh, the cows. Ano so kailangan um sa anong tawag, animal status declaration yun yung um from the farm to the transport operator to the processing facility, yung document na yan ay malinaw at hihingin yan doon sa processing facility namin. So, kailangan nakikita ilang baka o ilang sheep ang dineliver nyo. So, lahat ba to ay may farm assurance status so yung certification. So, meron din kasing antibiotic-free program. So, kailangan yan lahat na trace nyo kasi there is a tendency na 
i-switch nung farmer, for example, yung product niya na ay ito ay lalagay ko dun sa farm assurance kasi mataas ang bayad nila dun. So, dapat farm assured siya. So, those are some things. So, those are some of the threats and um, vulnerabilities kapag may claims ka at may um, chain of custody requirement ka para sa produkto mo. So, sinasabi din that the company shall have processes in place to access information on historical and developing threats to the supply chain which may present a risk of adulteration or substitution of raw materials. So, dapat aware ka palagi uh, when you do your threat assessment as well as your vulnerability assessment. So, emerging risks and also, kumbaga, di ba, when you do your risk assessment, was the severity versus um, the frequency. So, there are certain um, raw materials like honey, spices that are really expensive. So these are the ones who are at particular risk of um, being swapped or being adulterated. So sabi nila sa atin, di ba yung pepper, parang papaya ba? Buto ng papaya. So yung mga ganong um, pandaraya, yun ang tinitingnan. Saan siya maaaring mangyari? So Again, as similar to dun sa threat assessment for food defense, you also have to have a documented vulnerability assessment. So at which points uh, would be or which raw materials in your, um, when you produce your food, ang particular, which has higher risk of substitution or adulteration. And then when you, when you are able to like scan you or assess your uh, process as well as your inputs, um, kailangan ma, um, makita mo sa plano mo ano yung appropriate controls mo. Do you do testing? Um, do you just, uh, do you do supplier audits? Um, yeah, yung, do you do external audits of your suppliers para makita mo, ah, tama yung sinasabi nila, ah, secure yung process nila. So, yun yung mga control measures mo para sa in, iyong vulnerability assessment um, requ uh, requirements. What else? Sinasabi that where products are labeled or claims are made on finished packs, which are dependent on the status of a raw material, status of each batch of the raw material shall be verified. So, again, when you say that you're certified under such claims, uh, you'd have to be able to show proof. Uh, what else? When, where claims are made about the methods of production, so organic, halal, or kosher, the site shall maintain the necessary certification status in order to make such claims. So again, it uh, completes that requirement of uh, proving product authenticity claims and chain of custody. So another standard that I have and I'm working on uh, to meet requirements para sa aming planta is this FSSC, um, FSSC 22,000 version 5. So under their section 2 and section 4, they have requirements for food defense. So sinasabi, again, similar then, may documented procedure ka to do a, um, a threat assessment. And then when after the results of that threat assessment that you have done, you'd be able to... Um, develop and implement mitigation measures for significant threats. And I think the previous speaker have, has said that um, there should be a system like your HACCP system. It should be audited and it should be reviewed uh, at certain frequencies. So for FSSC 22,000, they require it to be reviewed annually. So particularly when you have a new process, you have a new product, you have a new ingredient, or you have identified a new risk in your process or, or in your system. So um, section four of FSSC, uh, sinasabi, ito yung guide, guideline nila that is like when you do your HACCP, you also should establish a food defense team. You should do a task up and you identify um, your risks and then select your control measures. And overall, you have to document it including your control measures and your monitoring schemes for that and your verifications procedure 
as well as uh, development of an effective training and communication strategy. So for this one is an example uh, of um, what's this a review of um, the threat assessment that we have uh, we, that we have in the in the factory, for example, general requirements on security, what, what security measures in place during um, after hours when the uh, factory is not um, processing. I know so so you'd have, have to be able to rate that particular um, control measure that you have, that se se severity and yung, um, risk. So if you have um, control already, um, kung sapat na yon sa tingin mo, sasabi mo, it's not a significant hazard. So similarly, um, perimeter fences, my lighting, adequate lighting, so it, it, my roving guard ba, so yung mga ganon. Um, this is just a snap, uh, a snippet of um, the threat assessment uh, um, that you do for when for and when you check your food defense plan. So again, this one is another snippet. This is actually based on your um, threat assessment. This is how you write your plan, diba? Right? Um, there are sections uh, on security general inside security ano yung ano yung controls nyo there are restricted areas um in the establishment where um that are clearly identified and authorized personnel lang tapos access nya is via assigned key levels so emergency lighting in place and you have emergency alert systems so another thing in your security would be your water um, yung water tanks, again, for BRC, it's stipulated that kailangan nakalak yan. So water tank lids are fitted with security screws to prevent anyone from contaminating contents. Because it's a particular risk kung may disgruntled employee, lalagyan lang niya ng contaminant yung water nyo. So ap apektado na talaga yung produkto nyo. And again, for ingredients, you have to... Um, it's a requirement under the HACCP din naman and under the risk management program to have an approved suppliers program and you audit it um, depending on the risk, um, on your risk assessment. Then you, similar um, controls for chemical or hazardous material control security. So chemicals are purchased from approved suppliers. Uh, storage areas are via restricted access. So these are examples on how you control um, uh, or how you implement your plan. And this one is also important, information security, because for many of the industries here, automated na yan, di ba? Pag, pagka deliver yung isang um, ingredient, for example, you isa-scan nyo lang yan eh, tapos pupunta na yan sa, sa systems nyo, or kung, kung paper, uh, pen and paper pa rin kayo, so you'll you'll need to be able to document or to be able to have a document control system. Ano? So it's also part of information security. So sinong may access to sensitive information? Um, yung computer systems nyo, may passwords ba yan for each user? And even for vi virus um, detection systems, dapat um, kontrolado nyo rin yan at namamanage nyo. And when you have incidents of um, yung mga hackers, how do you manage it and how do you back up your information via your um, server backing programs? And also, these are just examples of, uh, in a previous company, uh, what we have developed for our food defense and site security program. So in general, ito yung key points of control na lagi namin tinitignan. It's, I, I think, dun, when food defense was initially introduced, ang... Um, Emphasis is in, in bioterrorism, but in general, yung threats sa system nyo, whether it's a, um, intentional adulteration for whatever reason, kung gusto lang yan ng 15 minutes of fame, or a disgruntled employee, or a terrorism attack. So it's more encompassing uh, rather than focus on bioterrorism talaga kasi anything can happen in the food industry. So these are key points of control for 
outside security and access points, including incident reporting, your system or your program or plan should have these following. So outside security measures um, like fencing and gates, the example kanina, lighting, also review your, your lighting. Kasi kumbaga may, may area sa planta, for example, your engineer, engineering room or ammonia room, um, walang light. So baka may magnanakaw o may um, particular dodgy person who'd be able, who could easily sabotage that area kasi hindi masyadong adequately lighted. So your transport, loading, and unloading areas. Um, again, sinas- sabi ko nga rito, maraming kamay ang, or maraming taong involved dyan when you do the unloading, when you do the loading of containers. So you have to assess and have to have controls in those areas, including management of the container seals and also managing your electronic certifications and official assurances. Then there's also uh, parameters to look into in the inside security measures, your restricted areas access, um, engine room, server room, ammonia treatment plants or ammonia um, room, water treatment areas of the plant. So it's also important yung packaging stores nyo, kung saan nyo ini-store yung packaging kasi baka may adulteration din or may sabotage na mangyari dyan. Um, I think for the RMP, yung requirement dito sa New Zealand, as well as other market access requirements, yung mga vacuum packs, tsaka yung mga plastic where you put in your uh, yung packaging material, now, where you put in your product, dapat pag um, hindi ginagamit o parang nag-iba kayo ng brand or um, may butas, uh, hindi nyo basta-basta yung itatapon sa landfill. Kailangan din na-deface nyo. Normally, um, sa ibang planta, may parang iniinit nila para mag-shrink, para hindi na magamit or isa-slash para hindi magamit kasi pwede siyang gamitin parang... Baka makita na lang natin sa Divisoria na binibenta yung brand na yun, di ba? So, those are certain measures to uh, protect your brand as well. So, I've mentioned information security um, control measures. For personal security, I think similar sa Pilipinas, when you uh, recruit and onboard a staff, you do your character checks and police um, police checks. So, whether may mga convictions, um, yung character re- reference checks is really big here in New Zealand. Yung tinatawagan nila yung previous um, bosses mo kung ano yung attitude ng person na to. So, yun, yung background checks. And you also have to have a procedure uh, for your staff uh, on termination and um, when they leave. So, yung security proce- uh, process, yung passwords, um, yung ID cards. So, yan, dapat lahat iniisip nyo. Paano kung disgruntled siya, makaka-access pa siya sa site, um, ano yung mga risks natin? And, again, visitor control and site access. So, for plants, when they issue keys, particularly dun sa mga engineers or supervisors, lahat may, may trade key, di ba? Yung master key. So, sino ang may hawak nun? So, kailangan naka-document yan. May key registration. And when a staff leaves, there should be a process of re- um, making sure that the keys issued to that staff would be returned properly. So, natitrace nyo yan palagi. That's traceability in that um, area. And also, staff training. Um, it's really important for staff to be able to know ano yung programs nyo. Because they are actually your first line of defense. So for staff training, um, you have to tell staff na kung may nakita silang mali, kailangan nilang i, don, i-report. There's a requirement now in BRC and FSSC, yung tawag nilang whistleblowing policy. So anonymous reporting. Um, so para hindi matakot yung staff na pag nakita nila yung isang other staff or even a superior a senior member of um, the team may ginagawang masama, they should be, be able to have access to anonymous reporting. So, yun yung mga programs in place dapat. So, 
monitoring and alarms incident response. I think earlier uh, there was a question about um, disaster risk management. And also the food defense system um, should also line up with the company's crisis management plan, including the product recall plan. Paano mo secure mahohold yung product mo kapag nakita mong may um, threat? So it should be included in the company's crisis management plan. And all the other systems should have, um, you should be able to test yung CCTVs, yung fire alarms, ammonias, and other site checks. So other key points of control, again, when you supply evaluation, so lahat ng, whether you contract farms or you contract um you animal farms and uh, no you have to have an approved supplier program this also includes uh, a supplier audits or an approved supplier program for your packaging and then control of contaminants and hazardous material control security so these are um, the main critical areas um, that um, we have developed controls para ma secure namin yung food defense para sa factories um, in the previous um, companies and the um, current company that I work, I work with. So I think I'm just summing up. Ano? In managing food safety, we need more than rules. We need more than regulations. And we need uh, uh, more than safe practices. Uh, what they emphasize now is that employees are the first line of defense. And we have to be able to empower our employees and take care of our employees. So, some BRC at some um, FSSC requirements, mini measure na rin nila yung food safety culture, which might be another interesting topic um, um, that BAFs could um, probably uh, look into yung food safety culture. Um, kasi it, it really is when you take care of your employees, when you train and empower your employees. Um, lahat ng um, kumbaga, requirements mo sa food safety really, um, uh, what's this, goes on smoothly. What else? I think this is my last slide. So in um, New Zealand, ito yung kanilang in-emphasize, ano? Optimizing operator ownership. Again, going back to, I think, the very first um, slide, sinasabi na food safety is the responsibility of the operator. So, may kita natin baliktad yung triangle. In the old system, ang nagda-drive ng food safety is the regulator. And um, yung supervisor or yung owner ng process, which is the operator, kaunti lang yung ginagawa niya. So when you optimize operator ownership, may kita mo na lahat ng bulk ng work is on the owner of that process, which, which would be your department supervisors, yung nasa baba ng linya. No? So when, the, when they do their job and you do your usual internal audits of your systems, then maliit na lang yung gagawin ng regulator. Hindi na siya yung bida. Kasi ang bida yung operator, di ba? So, the operator making final compliance decisions and compliance monitoring and the operator taking control of compliance and verification process through evidence-based process controls. So, lahat ng systems and checks is being done and completed at the operator rev level. So, yung regulator dito sa New Zealand, as I've mentioned, it would be MPI and for us, whether it's NMIS or FDA and our other regulatory agencies, uh, systems audit na lang ang tinitignan nila. They verify at a system level. They only check the internal audits and not really parang sampling na lang ang titignan nila sa inyong processes and not really policing. Hindi, hindi sila nag-operate as, as a policeman. Um, oversight lang oversight na lang yung role na tinitignan nila when they do their systems audit. So I think with that, uh, that's the end of my presentation.
Ayan. Thank you so much po, Ma'am Lara, for sharing po your knowledge and experience to our viewers. I guess po, uh, marami pong natutunan. Pati po ako, isa na ako sa maraming natutunan po sa inyong topic, Ma'am. Uh, ngayon po, pupunta na po tayo sa question and answer portion. Ayan po. Uh, we have question here po, Ma'am. Uh, from Sir uh, Kram Nok. Uh, question po niya is, uh, is your risk management plan based on an ISO standard or ISO 3100-2019 risk management guidelines? So as I've mentioned for the RMP here in New Zealand, it's um, uh, was this provided for under the Animal Products Act and um, it is based for governments mainly. It's based on the codex principles of HACCP, uh, but they've added, as I mentioned, um, requirements for assessing and managing risks under for wholesomeness and um, what's this one? For wholesomeness and truth to labeling. So I haven't really encountered the guidelines under the New Zealand um, what's this codes of practice and um, regulations that refer to uh, um, ISO 3000, 31,000. Ano. So it's really mainly uh, complying with Codex HACCP guidelines. Thank you, Puma. Uh, habang po nagtatype pa po sila ng mga questions po nila, uh, mayroon po akong question po. Uh, na may na-encounter po ba kayong any instances na nag-reach po yung food defense po sa inyong company? And if mayroon po, uh, ano po yung mitigation measure po na in-implement po po? I think, I think for New Zealand, um, kasi when, I, when we were audited under the supply chain security systems, um, New Zealand is regarded as a green country. Ano, so mababa yung threat kasi mataas yung level of compliance. So at this stage, wala pa akong na-encounter. Although in terms of product authenticity, unintentional yun dun sa part ng um, operator side namin na na-mix niya yung tawag namin, ano yun eh? Anong tawag dun? Mobs. So yung deliver na lamb or sheep na mix niya dun sa assured status versus an unassured status pero error yun ng operator so we have to we had to do a big um, trace back of asan yung carcass nung sheep na galing dito sa farm na to versus so we have to segregate so as long as we are able to anong tawag dyan matrace namin lahat nung carcasses it was all good uh and um, approved and released by the veterinarian. Uh, it was unintentional and it's part uh, an operator error on our side sa company. But any other intentional threats and um, risks, wala pa naman. Hey, well, thank you po, Ma'am Lara. So far, uh, Wala pa ulit tayong nare-receive na questions. So, para po sa ating viewers, pwede po tayong uh, magbigay uh, ng katanungan po sa ating... Uh, ayan, speaking of, meron na po tayong uh, next question. Uh, sa question po ni Mr. Benedict Paul, as a QA manager, do you also check food defense of your suppliers? Anything you can share about your observation on the food defense of the primary producers in New Zealand? Okay, so um, again, for all the companies I've worked with, merong approved supplier program. Uh, ang main thing, um, kinakategorize namin yung approved, uh, yung suppliers namin, ano, kung um, high risk or low risk sila or medium risk. For high risk suppliers, we actually do external uh, site audits dun sa mga suppliers namin. Uh, uh, for low-risk suppliers, particularly those suppliers na may GFSI standard, kaya importante yung GFSI standard eh. Minsan hinihingi na lang namin yung um, certificate nila, whether it's a BRC standard, an FSSC standard, kasi 
kasama na yun sa system eh, if you if you're implementing a BRC certified um program or an FSSC certified program or an equivalent GFSI certified um program okay na yun kasi chinek na nila yun eh, yung food defense um programs nung companies na yun so a eh, kailangan mo na lang i-cite yung certificate and you just ask them uh, via a supplier questionnaire um ano yung mga programs nyo, ano yung, minsan document review na lang yun, depende dun sa uh, category nung supplier nyo. Anong sabi? Um, anything you can share about your observations on the food defense? I suppose, again, compare dito sa, sa, sa compare sa Pilipinas, ano, um, the actual primary producers here in New Zealand are, yung farmers are really big, kasi ikta ekta yung lupa. So, may resources sila. And I think yung compliance nga, kasi sa farm, they have uh, farm audits that are regulated by MPI. So, in audit yan, including yung um, veterina um, use of veterinary medicine, pati yung sakit, um, ano pa, sa, sa mga vegetable farms din, may mga audits din yan. And also, dun sa mga fishing areas. So, sa current work ko, we have deep water vessels. So, yung mga MPI um, inspectors, they, sumasakay din sila number ko at ino-audit yan. So, lahat ng points ng, um, or lahat ng areas of primary production, may audits yan galing sa regulator. So, I think the compliance level is really um and tag don really good tapos may levels din yan for when you do your when they when MPI or the regulator um uh, audits you so ang pinakamataas na level for in meeting New Zealand regulatory requirements sabi nila is they call it um PBV levels ano performance based verification so ang pinakamataas na grade is level 6. So, si, pag, pag, level 6, pag level 6 ka, twice a year ka lang i-audit. Pero pag bumaba yung grade mo, ibig sabihin, marami kang non-compliances. You could be audited three times um, every three months. And then, pag mas mababa ka, siguro under level 2, you're audited monthly. So, based on risk din. Kasi, Kumbaga, marami kang non-conformances, mataas yung risk na marami kang mali, mas madaming beses kang i-audit. So, yung level of compliance, tinitingnan din nila based on risk. Ayun po. Thank you po, Ma'am Lara. Para po sa ating uh, next question, uh, sabi po dito, is there an assessment program in which TACCP and VACCP are combined or integrated or separate po talaga? Um, I'm not quite sure. Pero dun sa ginawa namin mga programs, um, the threat assessment um, threat assessment is separate from the vulnerability assessment. Kasi for threats, ito yung, again, yung risks mo dun sa security mo and dun sa threats sa products mo versus yung vulnerability uh, mainly focused nung anong tawag doon um, I forgot that term yung um, pag switch mo pag switch ng produkto mo ba? so magkaibang parameters ang tinitignan when you do the TASAP versus the VASAP I haven't really seen a combined system Okay, thank you, Ma'am. Uh, for our last question, po, uh, from an from Sir Angelo, pa rin po, uh, would the assessment program for food defense fully cover food fraud? Hmm. Food fraud is mainly when you do your um VASAP, de ba? Um. There are dif dependes um. Uh, um, program na pwedeng i-implement ng company company nyo. So, for us, yung food defense, I think mainly 
is focused on the threat assessment. May iba pa kaming um, program when we do that um, vulnerability assessment and how it is implemented. But so far, um, for both industries that I've worked with, for the seafood and the meat industry, um, they only required yung vulnerability assessment at uh, ang, when we did our assessment, uh, we justified na low risk siya for substitution. So our current systems are actually enough to control or manage any risk of substitution. Kasi um, yung systems namin, for example, sa meat, may may labels na siya for halal tapos yung tamper proof um packaging and doon siya kasi mang, mga naka vacuum pack yun eh and then for from the producer from our processing site to to the customer um lahat yan documented ano may mga sec secure export schemes na ini-implement ang New Zealand which allows us to have um, a good um, supply chain and logistics for our supply chain. So, ang justification namin for food fraud is low risk yung produkto namin. So, again, I think it would depend dun sa, sa kagustuhan or sa, sa strategy nung process or kung pagsasamahin niya yun or minsan kasi... Um, I, parang I, hindi na lang i-complicate masyado yung anong tawag doon analysis paralysis na sabi nila di ba um, when you think your products and your uh, are low risk and your controls in your program are enough and i think it would satisfy your certifiers already anything else I think that was our last question po. Thank you po sa pagpapaunlak at pag-answer po ng ating mga, ang, ng mga katanungan mula sa ating live viewers, Ms. Alms. Again, thank Ramatik. you so much po, Ma'am Lara. <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night po. Ayan po, ngayon po ay dadako na po tayo sa ating synthesis. Para sa ating synthesis, diniscuss ni Ms. Melissa Anciena ang unang paksa ukol sa PNS BAFs 134-2013 or yung Food Defense Guidance for Industry. Dito, kanyang tinalakay ang mga basic concepts and uh, principles ng food defense at kung paano mag-develop ng isang food defense plan. Uh, ito yung ilan sa kanyang uh, ibinahagi kanina. First, uh, yung food defense. So, food defense protection, uh, yung food defense is a uh, protection of food products from intentional contamination by biological, chemical, physical, or radiological agents that are not reasonably likely to occur in uh, food supply. Second po, food defense principles and concepts wherein meron tayong uh, unintentional or accidental and intentional. Third is the food defense encompasses intentional contamination, economic adulteration, disgruntled employees or sabotage, uh, counterfeiting, diversion, and uh, tampering. Fourth is a uh, developing or development of food defense plan. So, na i uh, share sa atin yung basic food defense plan, wherein uh, meron itong four base components. It is the outside security, general inside security, logistics, production, and uh, storage security, and lastly is yung management. Then, diniscuss din yung vulnerability assessment, wherein uh, facilitators intentional contaminations, factors contributing to unit operation vulnerability, and yung carver shock tool. Kabilang rin sa ibinahagi sa atin ang uh, resource requirements, training tools and resources, assessment of effectiveness, audits and corrective action, and last is yung food defense documents and records. 
Thank you, Ms. Alms. At sa pangalawang paksa naman, ibiniha, ibinahagi naman ni Ms. Lara Navarro ang kanyang mga experiences tungkol sa implementation ng food defense plan or food defense, ang kanyang food defense journey. Uh, diniscuss niya po yung food defense plan in New Zealand perspective po. So, nagbigay po siya ng tatlong step. What, first is the regulatory requirements. Uh, sinabi po na dito na sa New Zealand po, mandatory po ang re, na may registered risk management program at mayroon po itong parang formula, which is HASA plus wholesomeness plus food labeling. Second po is for the expert requirements. Uh, mayroon po government to government agreements or, may, or pwede din pong overseas market access requirements po or OMA. Then lastly po for the third step, uh, yung mga customer requirements dito. So dito po, uh, binigay po niya yung mga GFSI standard tulad po yung mga in, sinusunod po nila. Tulad po yung BRCGS or yung British Retail Consortium Global Standard. Uh, yung mga sections po na na-discuss na po niya is under 4.1. I 4.2, Site Security and Food Defense para po sa Threat Assessment. And Section 5.4, or yung Product Authenticity Claims and Chain of Custody Site. Uh, nabanggit din po niya yung FSS, FSSC 2200 version 5, or yung Food Safety System Certification. Then lastly po, uh, nagbibay po siya mga key points of control. Uh, ito po yung mga Site Security Access Points, including the Incident reporting second is the personal security third is the monitoring and alarms or incident response fourth is the supplier evaluation or approved supplier program next is the control of contaminants and lastly is on the hazardous material control security so very insightful po ang ating webinar ang mga paksang pinalakay po ngayong araw uh, sana po marami po tayong natutunan ngayong hapon uh, so, so dadako na po tayo sa, pangat, sa ibang parte po ng ating webinar. Uh, nais po namin malaman ang inyong reaction bilang manunood. Ukoy po sa daloy ng programa ng ating webinar, uh, magkakaroon lang po tayo ng short satisfaction survey. Uh, let, let me share my screen lang po. Sorry. Ayan. So magtungo lang po tayo sa menti.com. Com. at ilagay po natin ang code na 49540304 and click submit po. Ayan. So, short reminder lang po na ang makukuha po natin certificate ngayong araw ay certificate of attendance at kailangan po natin masugatan ang pre and post test and yung evaluation form kung nais po natin makakuha ng certificate at yung copy ng presentation ko na diniscuss ng ating mga speaker. So, eto, eto pong ating satisfaction survey. Nais po namin malaman kung ano ang inyong reaksyon sa daloy ng ating webinar ngayong araw. Uh, ma mangyari lamang kung magbukas po tayo ng another tab browser sa ating mga devices, sa ating cellphone, laptop, or computer. At magtungo po tayo sa www.menti.com at i-enter po natin ang ating code na 49540304 at i-click po kung ano po ang inyong nararamdaman ngayon sa ating webinar. Uh, we have very satisfied, satisfied, neutral, and satisfied, very unsatisfied. Uh, sa pamaraan po ito, malalaman po namin ang ibok ng puso ng ating mga manonood. So, yun, meron akong nakikita dito, Brooke, parang ano, uh, feeling ko nagkamali lang ng click itong viewers natin, ano, kasi meron tayong nakita, ano, pero, well. <laughs> okay lang yan, kailangan natin ng mga ans feedback sa, sa kanila upang mapabuti pa natin ang ating susunod na webinar po. Uh, so far, we have 130 and counting po na sumasagot sa ating satisfaction survey. So, let me wrap up lang din po. Uh, so far, we have 91 and counting who are very satisfied and 60 satisfied. We have 4 neutral. Wala po tayong nakita sumagot na unsatisfied or very unsatisfied. And a total of 160 
for ang sumagot sa ating satisfaction survey. Ayan. So we'll be closing po the satisfaction survey in a few minutes po. Second. And para po magbigay daan na magpa sa ating mga ibang announcements. So wrapping up po. We have 109 very satisfied, 64 satisfied, 4 neutral, and as is, wala po tayong nakuha ng feedback from unsatisfied and very unsatisfied. Ms. Alms? Ayan. Um, reminder po, uh, paalala sa ating uh, post test, uh, maari po nating sagutan sa loob ng isang oras. After nito isara, uh, after po ng isang oras ay isasara na po namin yung link. Kaya po sana masagutan natin yung post test within one hour or sa loob ng isang oras. At uh, para sa ating closing remarks, uh, inaanyayahan po namin ang aming assistant director, si Ma'am Grace Mandigma. Magandang hapon po ma'am. Hi, um, hi, Brooke. Maraming salamat. Ang daming information for this afternoon, no? <laughs> Medyo mahirap ma-absorb yung iba, but uh, we are thankful for Ma'am Lara and Ma'am Sheena for really disintegrating yung very technical na guidelines on food defense. So yung ating uh, barang very practical information on how it is being implemented in the plant, na hindi lang siya pang uh, food manufacturing business, but it's actually pwede rin sa uh, primary production kasi food defense nga ay ang, in, uh, ang unintentional contamination ng pagkain pwedeng mangyari saan mang bahagi ng food supply chain diba so it's very important na meron kang defense for this particular uh, unintended contamination but what really struck me dun sa dalawang lecture siguro is one kailangan doon na highlight no na importante yung standards at yung pag-implement ng standards, although sabi nga ni Ma'am Shena kanina, voluntary pa lang ang food defense ngayon sa Pilipinas unless gusto mong mag-export uh, ng product kasi yung mga trading partners natin nire-require na siya. So, makikita mo no, yung importansya ng pag-implement isang standards para maka-access ka ng market. ba? And yung pang isang nasabi ni Ma'am Lara na meron silang hindi uh, naikarga sa isang shipment. So, doon din nakikita yung importansya ng traceability at importansya ng recording. Kasi kung ano man yung mangyari, whether that's unintentional or intentional contamination of food, kailangan mo talaga matrace mo siya para ma-recall mo yung product or may magawa ka pa about it. So, hopefully, marami po tayong natutunan ngayong hapon regarding food defense. And uh, siguro sa chat box, no, i-provide natin yung link dun sa ating uh, guidelines, uh, guidance document. Na as of the moment, uh, guidance document pa rin siya. So unless otherwise, siguro may uh, mag-sabi sa ating mga regulatory agencies that this is now going to be a mandatory standard to be implemented by uh, agri-fisheries industries, no? So, dun siguro siya magiging mandatory. But it's good to have information on uh, that there is such a guidelines na in existence siya, yung ating food defense guidelines here in the Philippines. So, again, maraming salamat po sa lahat na tumutok sa ating webinar ngayon. We are 260 plus strong na nakatutok dito sa webinar na to. At some point, sabi ko, baka mamaya maubos na yung uh, ating mga audience, no? Pero hindi talaga siya o bumibitaw. So marami pong salamat sa inyong pagtutok ngayong hapon at magkita-kita po tayo sa mga susunod pa nating webinars. Marami pong salamat at magandang hapon ulit. Ayan. Maraming salamat po Ma'am Grace sa pagbibigay ng panghuling mensahe. At dito na po nagtatapos ang ating webinar. Magkita-kita tayong muli sa mga susunod pa naming webinar. Abangan lamang po ang aming mga anunsyo sa aming Facebook page. Uh, maraming salamat po mga kabap sa susunod po uli. Bye.
Mga mangi 